Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we are going to be setting up and installing a Ubiquiti Nano Station AC Loco. Now this is a wireless point-to-point -point bridge or point-to-multipoint if you get real crazy with it. And this device is actually, in my opinion, one of Ubiquiti's like bread and butter devices. And what I mean by that is Ubiquiti is really heavily invested in the long haul wireless or wireless ISP um, product space. And they have been for a very long time and that is one of the things that they are extremely good at producing. And these Nano Station uh, 5AC Locos or even the Nano Station M5 Locos, I think they've had a few generations of these so far, but all of them have extreme range for making a wireless point-to-point -point bridge. So I think these AC Locos have like a maximum range of about 10 kilometers at five gigahertz and they only cost 50 bucks. So for 50 bucks, you can get about 400-ish uh, megabits per second throughput over around 10 kilometers if you can even find that much uh, space without trees or anything in between you then you can have a wireless uplink. Now, even though these are their bread and butter devices, um, this is something that I have not covered on this channel at all uh, yet. I've never really had a use case for these, um, but I've always been excited to try them. And I finally moved into a new house where I have a reason to buy one of these. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be setting up a pair of these NanoStation 5AC Locos between my main house and my new barn. So we're gonna be putting one of these mounted to the side of my house up fairly high, and then we're gonna be putting the other one on my barn, running a cable into the barn, and powering that with a Ubiquiti PoE switch. So the plan here is I'm gonna have one on my house powered by my PoE switch in my main server rack, and then that's going to bridge over to the barn, which will have another loco powered by a unify poe switch now in the end it, it doesn't end up working exactly like this so stay tuned for a few modifications that we come into along the way um, i have actually set up quite a few of these in my day job but it has been a while and apparently i was really rusty because i ran into some problems that i really should not have run into at all so just follow along here and see what I did wrong, learn from my mistakes, and hopefully you will learn, uh, for one, not to do what I did, and two, how to actually set them up the right way. So let's just go ahead and get a lay of the land here. So here is the side of my house that we're going to be mounting our first loco to, and here is the barn that we're going to mount the other one to. Now on the inside, we're going to run a cable through, and my plan is to mount an access point like right here in the center of the barn to get full coverage uh, the most optimal place that I can put it but anyways I actually ordered these things quite a while ago and they've just been sitting around so out of the box these things come with a uh, mounting system for a pole now I took these out of the box I looked at them and I was like well maybe I can come up with some kind of something else to mount them to other than a pole or maybe I can get a pole set up but at the end of the day I, I really couldn't figure out a great way to mount these to anything other than a pole and I didn't have one and I didn't really want to go and try and just rig something up for the purpose of this so what I ended up doing was I went and I bought these uh, quick mount kits and they are like 20 bucks a piece so they're already like a third of the price of the access point itself but they they looked pretty good they looked like they would work exactly with this and it looked like everything i needed to really get it going so i ordered two of these and this is me just kind of unboxing it we've got the main mount itself and then we have these two ball joints which one of them is compatible with this uh 5ac loco and the other one is compatible with other ubiquity uh wireless bridge devices. So for this video, we're gonna be using obviously the one that's compatible with what we're mounting, but also um, I noticed that on the box, there's this great little diagram. And if you notice, there's this little check mark and an X next to how the, uh, I'm gonna call it the flange should go. I was a little confused um, by this at first, but basically 
you want to snap this piece into the bottom of the mount. So when you put it on, you'll be like, yes, this is how it goes. It's just kind of loose. This is how it should be. No, push hard until it clicks. And that's how it's actually supposed to be. So once I had kind of fiddled with this mount for a few minutes and figured out how it was actually supposed to work, um, I busted the ladder out and pulled my Cat5 uh, cable all the way up to around whereabouts I wanted to mount the access point. Now, in the instructions and kind of the, you know, like quick start guide, it just says to put that little flange on the end of this mount and then you just hand screw it into whatever you want to as long as you have the metal plate between them. I tried that for a little bit and then I kind of gave up and said, mm, yeah, I'm going to actually drill a hole first. So that step in the quick start guide is actually labeled optional, but the screw on this thing is a thick boy. So you're probably going to want to drill a pilot hole before you try and hand screw this into anything. And once I had the pilot hole drilled, I was able to get it right in there. And then at that point, all I had to do was just loosen the mounting mechanism and get it kind of halfway straight for me to put the actual uh, bridge onto. And these bridges actually come with a uh, zip tie uh, mounting mechanism. I, I wasn't sure if I needed that, so I just brought it up the ladder with me anyway, but it turns out that really all you got to do with this quick mount is just slide the uh, bridge onto it. It just goes right on there, and it stays pretty sturdy. So there, there was no need for the zip tie here, and I was a little surprised at how easy that was going to be, but I mean, I guess they call it a quick mount for a reason, so now all I have to do is just terminate my... Uh, RJ45 end onto the end of my cable and plug it into the access point. So here I am doing some high altitude crimping and plugging it right in. And I never actually terminated the other end of this cable, so we've got to go into the server room and punch down the other end of this cable to my patch panel. Now I've already used the first three ports, so I'm going to use port four. None of this matters for any of you, but I'm gonna punch down the other end here to port four and then patch it right into my PoE switch. And once the patching is done, we just go ahead and plug it right into the switch. And you can kind of see in the video that I have a uh, PoE light on the port. However, I'm not getting any link activity. So I was kind of wondering what was up with that. Why, why was I not getting any link and only PoE? So what I did was I went back, I checked both ends of the connectors, made sure that the data pins were properly terminated. They both were. So then I did some research and realized that I didn't really look at what uh, PoE standards these bridges supported. So I just assumed that these supported regular standard PoE, like 802.3AT. However, they don't. These uh, 5 AC locos actually only use 24 volt passive PoE. They don't use PoE standards. So this is kind of harkening back to the older Unify actual like wireless access points like the ACLR, where they didn't use standard PoE that could be provided by any off the shelf switch. You had to use either a Unify switch, which was capable of providing this 24 volt passive PoE, or the PoE injector. So luckily, I have quite a few of these um, 24 volt passive injectors lying around from all of my old Unify access points. So I grabbed one of those, plugged it up, patching the PoE side into our port four patch panel that we just punched down, and then putting the LAN side into port five on my switch. And now when I go outside and bring up my wireless networks, I can see the management network for this Loco 5AC. Now this is just following the guide on the inside of this wireless bridge box. Um, it says to go to the app store and download the UNMS app. Now it's not called UNMS anymore. It's actually called UISP. So these boxes, even though I ordered them like two weeks ago, and UISP came out probably two years ago, um, they're still outdated on the documentation side. So I'm sure if you search UNMS, it'll still come up, but just know that UISP is the new um, nomenclature for the application you want to set these up. So if we go to the app store, download that and launch it, as long as we're connected to this uh, 5AC Loco Wi-Fi network, 
we should be able to discover it and do some initial setup. And that's really great. It's really easy to just give the device power and then connect to it with your phone. And to start, I don't change any of the settings. I just leave it with the default name. I leave it with uh, DHCP as the network method. And I leave the network mode as bridge because that's what we want. And after I hit save, it says it's finishing up for quite a while. Actually, it takes it um, probably three minutes total to get off of this page. So in the meantime, I just go ahead and start on the barn side. Now, I was originally going to put this thing like kind of closer to the door, but I figured I would put it over here uh, next to the lean to because I have a little bit easier access to get the cables into the actual barn. So I just go ahead, go up, I drill my pilot hole straight into uh, the metal and the stud. Probably should have used a um, actual metal tapping drill bit, but you know, can't be bothered. So I just used this regular one, took me a little bit to get it in there. But once it was there, all I had to do was hand screw the uh, quick mount in and then mount the AP. Then on the back side of that panel, I just drilled a hole for the Cat5 cable and uh, ran that straight from the box through the hole till I thought I had enough on the other side to connect to about where I wanted the uh, switch to be. Then instead of actually climbing the ladder and terminating that uh, RJ45 end, I decided to do it on the ground this time, which is uh, highly recommended. Definitely do that instead of up on the ladder. Um, I don't know why I didn't do that the first time, it just uh, never crossed my mind. So once I had that terminated, all I had to do was just uh, move the ladder back around to the um, access point portion and plug her in. Now at this point, I've got um, the house side all set up. We've ran the cable, it's plugged into the bridge, it's powering it through the PoE injector, which I didn't plan to use, but again, my switch doesn't support uh, 24 volt passive, so had to use it. And now I've got the AP mounted on the uh, barn side as well. Now, my plan for here is to use this Unify 8 port switch, which is a 60 watt PoE switch. And I do know that this switch supports 24 volt passive. So what should happen is I can just plug it straight into one of these uh, four ports that has the PoE capability. And because I've configured the switch in the past, I know that I have one of these ports configured for PoE. At least that was my original thought. I figured that past me would have been smart enough or had the need to configure one of these for PoE. But I ended up plugging this access point into uh, all four of these PoE ports and I did not pull power from any of them. So let's go back and pull another 24 volt passive injector from my stock. Uh, luckily, I have so many of these that I can just pull them whenever I want. And then I just connect this injector to our bridge and then the other end to this switch. Now, the other port we're going to plug in is for our actual access point. So I'm using an ACLR um, for the barn. And I'm just going to plug it in and leave it here because I was going to do everything nice and pretty. But I ran into so many roadblocks and it already got so late that pretty much just throwing things um, into the barn uh, with the expectation that I'm going to clean it up later. Spoiler alert, I'm, I'm probably not. It's probably going to stay that way for at least a few months. But, you know, the, the thought was nice. So since I didn't have PoE on any of those ports, we got the injector. Now I'm plugging in the access point to uh, port 5 here, which will have PoE once I get it set up. However, since I apparently configured this thing wrong to begin with, um, this was from my other house. It was used as my living room switch. So we're just going to do a quick reset on this thing. Start all over. Once this bridge is up, we should see this for adoption and get it into our Unify um, controller. And then once it's adopted, I can actually enable PoE on two of these ports and then come back later, switch the bridge to a PoE port, and our access point should already be powered. Now, at this point, I thought everything was good. So I started going into the app. I was looking for the other side. However, it just keeps telling me that there um, is no other side. It's, it's not detecting the other end. It's looking for a station, all of this stuff. So at this point, I just start changing all kinds of settings. Like I start changing the uh, channel width. I start changing the point to point mode. Um, I start messing with the wireless SSID and I even start rebooting them. Now here is where 
I just apparently forgot all of my past experience with these. What you have to do is one side is the access point. So, so when we set up the AP on the house side and connected to it with our UISP app, all we needed to do was assign that as an access point and then give it an SSID and a password, which we would match on the other side. So where I messed up was I put the AP on the barn side and designated it as an access point as well. Now I did have the SSID matching. I have um, barnlink nano. That's my SSID. I put in my password for it. It matched on both sides. However, I never saw the other side because both of them were designated as APs. Don't do that. Only one side can be designated AP. So after I went inside and uh, kind of messed around a little bit, watched some TV and kept thinking about it, I was like, wow, I know where I messed up. I set both of them as the access point. So while they're both searching for a station, they're never going to find it because they both think they are the station, if that makes sense. So the house side needs to be set as the AP. And then all I did was I went back, connected directly to the barn side um, management network, turned off AP mode, and boom, I got a link. So finally, I can go about setting up the rest of it and tuning everything. So I immediately went into the um, alignment wizard and tried to get the best signal I could. Best signal I could get was about 51, uh, well, negative 51 decibels, which isn't bad, but it's not the best. Uh, my alignment is probably off, but at this point, as long as it's going to work, I'm fine with it. So I just let it be. And here's a kitty um, in case you were getting bored or distracted or anything. So at this point, I know that my bridge is good and it took way longer than it should have. Like I said, I've set these all up in the wild before countless times. I don't know why I had so much um, problem setting my own up. My brain just really didn't want to work today. And also, if you haven't been able to tell through the rest of this video, I'm stopped up, kind of sick, got allergies. So maybe that's why my brain wasn't working. Who knows? Anyways, I hope that this part of the video kind of taught you a little bit of something uh, about what to look out for. Now we can actually get into the meat of everything where we get in there and kind of clean some stuff up, make sure the bridge is good and actually manage it from our internal network. All right, so one of the access points we set up was 10.88.88.175. So we're just gonna browse to that. And I believe since we um, actually tied this to a UISP instance, uh, the username is not default. So usually you can log in with UBNT, UBNT. However, that says it's invalid. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my UISP instance. And this is something that won't happen um, for you if it's the first time you're downloading the UISB app. However, I had previously downloaded that and it was already tied to my on-premise UISP server. So I'm pretty sure that both of these uh, bridges uh, landed in my actual production network. So let's just log in here and see. And yep, I can see I have one access point and one station already in my uh, UISP server. So that's where these ended up. Let's see if we can find the uh, password to these. All right, so under the device and manage, I have the option to generate a password or show the password. If I show the password, it says I don't have uh, a credential in the vault for it. So I guess I have to generate a password, in which case here it says username is UBNT. And then I get this. So copy that password. And then I'm going to go back to this login, paste it in there, and hopefully we actually get the menu. So typically when I set up these devices, there is not already a UISP server. They're pretty much just set up standalone. So this is all kind of new to me. I really wasn't aware that they were going to automatically join to my UISP instance when I did the app, which I, I probably should have known because I've used it before and it's already tied to my server. But anyhow, um, this is new to me. So now we are in the web interface for our house side bridge. 
and we can see all of these statistics here. Now, I'm not really concerned about the statistics. What I'm really concerned with is the uh, wireless modes. Now, what I want is point-to-point -point mode turned on because with point-to-point -point mode on, we can get the 80 megahertz uh, channel width. Um, with it off, it gives us the ability to do point to multipoint, but we are limited to 40 megahertz for the channel width, which means our throughput is also limited. So what I would like to do is get this to the 80 megahertz channel width by using point to point mode. However, I'm not sure if I change it on this end, if I'm gonna lose connection with my barn side. So when you're dealing with a wireless bridge, you always wanna be cognizant with what changes you're gonna make and whether or not you're gonna cut your nose off so let's go ahead and bring up the Barnside um, AP GUI, which is 10.88.88. I believe it's 137. And we're gonna see if that same password that we copy and pasted for our other side will work here. And just as I thought, it, it won't. So let's go back to our UISP instance, which again, you probably won't have to do because it wasn't tied for it, but I'm going to generate a password for our station AP, which is the barn side. I'm going to go ahead and show that and copy it. Now, when I paste this in, we should go right into the uh, web interface. And this is our remote end or our barn side, as I will refer to it as. Now, if I go to wireless, I can see I have access point mode turned off, which is what I had to do to get it to work because I'm an idiot. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on point to point mode and I'm gonna change the channel width to, well, apparently 204080 is what I can select here. Um, I wonder if that'll change after we save it. So let's go ahead and save these changes and see what happens. Now I'm gonna go back to the house side and just see if this link uh, goes up or down because I made that change. And I'm not really, oh, there it goes. It is now showing that I do not have a link to my barn anymore. So I'm going to go to the wireless tab here. I'm going to also turn on point to point mode, but I'm going to set it to 80 megahertz. Now, just based off of these menus alone, I'm guessing that if I set the access point to 80 megahertz, that the um, other side will automatically negotiate that channel width as well. And the only reason I think that is because the menu on the other side had the 204080 basically auto option but on this side i could actually set it to 80 megahertz hard-coded but once again if you are running into issues or you are wanting to do a point to multi-point setup you will probably not want to um, enable these options and push the full 80 megahertz now my barn and my house are only about i don't know 50 meters apart ish maybe uh 70 feet so I'm pretty sure I can push the uh, full whatever these things will do. Now that looked like it successfully took, so I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and see if I have a um, connection. And it looks like I do. And we went from about 300-ish megabits up to 600 megabits for our um, throughput capacity, at least as stated by these. And you can see on the graph down here that we went from 320, 335, and then we had the reboot and the change. Well, it didn't actually reboot, but reconfigured. And now we're back up to 655 megabits throughput. So obviously with a wider channel width, we're gonna get more throughput, but also with the wider channel width, the more chance we have of interference, the more limited we are in our actual total distance. and all kinds of variables but in this situation with these two points being so close we can crank this thing and it'll be just fine so that is really what i wanted to change here was the point to point mode and the channel width now i do want to actually change the name of this uh, second ap which is the barn side so i'm going to go into i assume system settings yep here it is device name now i already renamed the house side so we're just gonna copy kind of what I did there. So I named it Nano Station Dash House. So I'm gonna name this one Nano Station Dash Barn. And I'm gonna go ahead and save those settings. Now the rest of these um, network settings I will probably be getting into later. Uh, I'm not gonna go through them in this video, but basically 
Right now, these are on my 88.88 .88 network, which is actually what I call my data center network. I don't really want these on that network, um, but for now, I'm just going to leave it because it's getting the job done uh, for the moment being. However, what I am going to do in the future is I am going to enable management VLAN. This is going to be a completely separate network than what's actually going to pass over it. And I probably do want to turn STP on. That's for spanning tree protocol, at least I assume. I don't know what else is called STP. And then I probably am going to change these uh, DNS servers and static IP in the future. But again, I'm not getting into that with this video. So really everything I've gone through right now is pretty much all you need to know to get this off the ground again. So hopefully you learned from my mistakes and don't repeat the whole um, setting both sides to access point mode uh, debacle and wondering why you're not seeing the other end. And also just remember to kind of aim them kind of sort of in the same direction as each other and make sure they have the same wireless SSID and password. And that's really all you got to do. And then you set one side, basically the one closest to your router or main network as access point and leave that option disabled on the other side. And then once you actually have them detecting each other, then you can go in and do the um, alignment tool, kind of move them a little bit, see if you can get a better signal. For me, I was only able to get negative 51 uh, decibel, but that all really depends on the distance, the weather, and all of that. So anyways, uh, without rambling too much, um, hopefully you learned something. And as always, happy networking.